Hey, this is X Cult Baby with another Atheist Bible reading, and today I am going to be covering the well-anticipated story of Adam and Eve. I'm probably going to be uh, pretty fired up about this one, I'm going to be honest, so look forward to that, and it's, it's probably going to be one of my longer videos too, so, you know, strap in. Alright, let's get into the story. So, in the beginning, I mean like Genesis chapter 1 beginning, this isn't necessarily Adam and Eve, but I'm just going to say it. The universe was not created in six literal days, and if you believe that, you need to do some research. Seriously. Like, any science textbook would be great. The universe is roughly 13.7 billion years old, and the Earth itself is four and a half billion years old. And you know what? Do not take my word for that, okay? Seriously, don't. I'm trying to promote skepticism and critical thinking skills. Liter seriously, don't take my word for it. Go do the research yourself. And you know what? If you're, you know, not super scientifically literate, if you don't know how to read a scientific pa research paper, find somebody who can and who can cite their sources so that you can check their work. Because I've seen people who supposedly said, well, this study says this, but then if you actually read their sources, it doesn't say that at all. So, you know, just do research. For real. Seriously. Research. So anyway, back to the garbage. <sighs> Genesis says that God created man in his image, male and female, etc., etc., and he instructs them with the task of populating the earth and dominating all the other life that is on it. Again, look this up for yourselves, but I will just say that it is impossible for mankind as we know it today to have come from a single human couple. God also happens to mention that all of the animals at this point are vegetarians, which is also like a huge no. Like, no fucking way, dude. That is not true. The way that ecosystems work, the way that the circle of life works, predators need to keep populations of herbivores in check. That's why I live in, uh, in Ohio and, you know, we're pretty much encouraged to go out and shoot the deer because when the people moved in, we drove all the wolves away. The wolves were the natural predators, so the deer population is completely unchecked unless we hunt them. That's how ecosystems work. There had to have been predators. And what about at the microscopic level? Bacteria, they eat dead organisms and decompose them, so unless the bacteria are also vegetarian, you know, there's going to be a lot of gross corpses sitting around that are not going to decompose anytime soon. Unless, of course, you know, the people who wrote the story didn't know anything about that stuff, and... But that's impossible, because, you know, the creator wrote the story, so... He should fucking know better. Wow, I'm only, like, a few verses in. I haven't even really gotten into the actual story yet, and I'm already, like... There's so many problems with this. So... Chapter 2 of Genesis kind of backpedals and explains more about the creation of the first man. God created him out of dust, blew life into his nostrils, and whoop, there's Adam. He sticks Adam in a garden called Eden. It's full of lots of fruit-bearing trees, including one tree that's called the Tree of Life and another that's called the Tree of the Knowledge of Good and Bad. And God tells him that he can eat from all the trees in the garden except for the tree of the knowledge of good and bad. Because the day that he eats from it, he will die. That is what he says. I'm sure if you're a parrot, you're already thinking you know how this is going to end. So God brings all the animals to Adam and he names them and that's fun. And then he puts Adam to sleep and steals one of his fucking ribs and then makes a woman out of it. Yay! And Adam wakes up and he's like, God, you couldn't make her the same way you made me. You had to steal one of my fucking ribs to make another person. Just kidding. But, you know, that would have been my reaction. Like, you know, you're the creator of all things. You couldn't make another person without stealing part of my body. So this is where things get interesting. Snake goes up to the woman. I know that you think her name is Eve, but she doesn't get called. She doesn't get the name Eve until much later in the story. For now, she's just the woman. So a snake goes up to the woman and asks her like, hey, didn't God say you're not allowed to eat any of the fruit in the trees in this garden? So the Bible does not say that this snake is being controlled or manipulated by any outside forces. It appears to be acting of its own volition. In fact, be at the very beginning of this chapter, the 
Bible describes the snake as being the craftiest of all creation. That implies that not only is this an this animal anthropomorphized and has a personality, but it kind of implies that all of the animals, to some extent, are anthropomorphized and have a personality. It also doesn't mention anything about it being particularly remarkable that the snake can talk, and Eve doesn't seem to think so either, because she just carries on the conversation with it. She's like, oh no, we are allowed to eat from all the fruit of all the trees, it's just the fruit from the tree of the knowledge of good and bad that we can't eat from. God says that if we eat from that, then we'll die that very day. And the snake is like, mm-mm, you won't die. God knows it too. When you eat from that fruit from that tree, your eyes will be opened and you'll be like God and you'll be able to know the difference between good and bad. So Eve looks at the fruit, takes some, and eats it. And she gives some to Adam to eat too. And as soon as their eyes become open to good and bad, the first thing they notice is each other's genitals. And they're like, ugh, that's nasty. I don't want to look at that. So they sew some underwear for themselves out of fig leaves. So, pausing for a second, fact check. I grew up believing that the snake told the first lie. It lied to Eve. But did it actually, like, what did it say? It said that she wouldn't die, which she didn't. At least not instantly, like God said that she would. God said, if you eat from it, the day they eat from it, you'll die. That didn't happen. They ate it, they were fine. He also said that their eyes would be open and they'd be able to tell the difference between good and bad, which happened. So, I, I don't see any lies here. In fact, if anybody was lying, it was probably God who said that they would die the day that they ate from it, and they didn't. So, God's taking a stroll through Eden, and Adam and Eve hide themselves from him, which, you know omnipresent, all-knowing God should not be able to hide yourself from him physically. Just shouldn't be able to. At all. Impossible. And God's like, Adam! Adam! Where are you at? Which, again, rhetorical question. He should know where Adam is if he's all omnipresent and stuff. And Adam's like, oh, sorry God, I'm hiding from you because I don't want you to see me naked. And God's like, you have literally always been naked, my dude. Who told you that you were naked? Did you eat the fucking forbidden fruit, Adam? And Adam's like, uh, that woman that you gave me, she gave me the fruit. And Eve's like, well, that snake told me that I, I should eat it. So then God starts cursing people. He curses the snake first. And he curses it to have to crawl on its belly forever. Which definitely implies that it had legs before. Like, apparently, he took the snake's legs away. He then curses Eve with very painful pregnancy and painful birth giving, and he also curses her that she will long for her husband, but he'll dominate her. So basically, if you're a feminist lesbian who doesn't want to become pregnant and give birth to children, you completely avoid this curse as a woman. No longing for men, no need to be dominated by men, and no pregnancy or childbirth. Like, just completely avoid that shit altogether. No wonder God hates us homos so much. It's because we just, whoop, totally dodged that bullet that he, you know, cursed us with. And then he curses Adam by making the ground, like, harder to farm or something. Like, and he makes thorns and thistles grow. But again... This is a very easily dodged curse because it does not affect you in any way as long as your profession is not a farmer. Like, if you're not a farmer, the curse of Adam doesn't affect you at all. And Eve finally gets named Eve after she starts having children. And she and Adam and all of their descendants are barred from ever again going into the Garden of Eden, thus cutting them off from the Tree of Life, thus making them eventually die. The end. So, let's go through a couple of points. I have three points that I really want to go over. Um, point number one is that the serpent in this story could not clearly, could not more clearly be just a snake. If this, if this snake is the devil in disguise or is being controlled by the devil, why would the Bible go out of its way to describe the serpent as the craftiest of all creation? You know, why would you anthropomorphize the animal if the animal itself is not doing the actions. Also, why would God curse all snakes if the snake was not itself responsible for its actions? Unless God's just an asshole, which he is, but like, 
you know, it still wouldn't make any sense. And another thing, why would Eve just be not at all alarmed by a talking snake if that wasn't the norm? You know, like, if the devil was controlling the snake, you'd be like, whoa, what the fuck? But otherwise, you'd just be like, oh, hello, Mr. Snake. Yes, you're a talking snake, and that's how snakes are. I mean, it's just a run-of-the-mill talking snake. Those show up, like, in lots of different myths. This isn't particularly remarkable that you have to make up an explanation for it as to why it was talking. Like, animals talk in myths all the time, and nobody ever fucking questions it, so why does this one need an explanation? Point number two. God is a negligent parent who should have custody taken from him. He's an awful parent. <sighs> Think about it this way. Adam and Eve cannot be that old. The only thing that, well, one of the only things that he told them to do was to populate the earth, right? And they didn't start having kids until they were kicked out of Eden. Ugh, out of Eden. So they must not have been there for very long, right? Like, unless they were specifically ignoring God's command, which would probably have gotten them kicked out anyway. So if they were just you know, not ready yet, or they just hadn't gotten to it yet, but it wasn't so long that it was like, come on, guys, get to fucking, you know, like, if they were probably toddlers at best, mentally. I mean, I'm sure that they were fully formed adult people, but as far as their experience goes and their mental age, they were toddlers at best. Now, imagine you've got a parent of toddlers who shows their kids, all right, when I'm not around, feed yourselves, okay? Here's where I keep all the food, and here's the arsenic that I also keep with the food. Don't eat the arsenic, it'll kill you. Does that sound like a good parent? Like, oh, well, I told them not to eat it, and they still did. How dumb? Like, they're kids. They don't... How can you possibly blame anybody but the parent for that? I mean, why does he put the tree there at all? Like, sure, it's, like, symbolic of mankind not being able to rule themselves or not being able to decide what's good and bad, but the tree is literally physically there for no reason except to tempt them. And when you give your creation free will, it is inevitable that at least one time someone is gonna fuck up. It's inevitable. It was basically a time bomb. Eventually, somebody was going to take that fruit and fuck everything up because God put it there. It was inevitable. And Point number three kind of piggybacks off of point number two, which is that God is responsible for all of the evil existing in the world. And that sounds like a really big thing, but if you start off with, you know, the original sin, it kind of follows. So he created the tree and put it within reach of mankind that would inevitably, you know, introduce sin into the world. He also created the snake that is apparently crafty and... The, the snake had no motivation at all to deceive Eve, so he's just an evil little asshole and God made him that way, evidently. I was taught growing up as a witness, um, the snake called into question God's sovereignty and that the reason that evil is still allowed to exist is because God is letting mankind and the devil ru rule themselves to prove a point about how much better he is as a ruler. And you know what? Fuck that. Fuck that. He's letting the whole world go to shit to prove a point to who? To boost his own ego? Nobody's going to take the authority away from him. He can just zap zap whoever rebels if he really wants to instead of letting everything go to shit. And what is the point of free will if your choices are do exactly as I say or die? What is the point of free will? And yeah, I'm sure God's up there and he's so sad that everything bad is happening. Boo hoo hoo. Well, if you can do something about it, fucking do it. If God has the power to stop evil and he's not, then he is evil. Period. And you know what? Punishing every single human for the mistakes of their ancestors, the single mistake of their ancestors, is also fucking evil. Because that's just not fair at all. If the story of Adam and Eve is somehow true, then God is either completely evil or completely incompetent. <sighs> All right, that's it for this video. I got that got me fired up. I'm like, I'm over it. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, please give it a like, leave a comment, and most importantly, share it. I upload new videos every Thursday, and next week I'm going to be doing the story of Cain and Abel. 
So subscribe and hit the bell icon if you want to get notified when that is premiering. Links to my social media and my email address are in the description if you want to follow me on any other platforms or contact me. My name is Xcult Baby, and I'm reminding you to go free yourself. Thank you for watching.